In this week's Recreate with Canva, we're going to see how we can recreate this effect where the screenshot is spruced up with two offset blobs and a little touch of color. Let's get started. So this week's design comes courtesy of accessally.com. They recently relaunched a revamp design of their website, which looks really nice, but what really caught my eye was this treatment here, where it's your standard screenshot, but they've put it on top of two blob elements and then slightly skewed it and add a bit of color. It really creates a sense of movement and is really quite interesting, I found. So I wanted to see how we might recreate this for use in our own designs. So let's go ahead and head over to Canva. Uh, we'll create this as a, let's call it, let's go 10, 1,000 by 1,000, let's say. So inside of Canva, if you log in with your free account in top left here, we'll click, click create a design. We'll go to custom dimensions, and let's just go with 1,000 by 1,000. It's generally a square shape, so that should serve as well. Now there's going to be a couple elements here. So we have the blob itself, which is then duplicated and then a screenshot, and that is on top of a square with a bit of a drop shadow to it. So there's a few things we're going to have to just put together, and let's see how we get on. So firstly, we'd want a blob. Now there's a couple ways to do this within Canva. So if we go Shapes itself, not seeing any blob shape for us. So let's try to actually just search for blob and see what we can find. So okay, there's a few, quite a number of options for us here. I do want to give a shout out to a particular thing I've called up before a website. It's called blobmaker.app. I have a whole video for it. I'll link to the in the description, but it's a really fun, simple tool where you can mess around and create any number of shapes for your designs. Lots of fun, lots of controls for what you do. And you can actually even download it in SVG format, which would really help as far as scalability. If you put it on your site, you'll be able to scale it as big, as small as you want. Same thing with Canva itself. So if you don't quite find the blob shape you want or you want something else for your other design, check out blobmaker.app. As I said, I have a whole different design video for that. Let's get back to our main one here. We'll just use one of the ones here. This, this shape seems fairly similar to what we're looking to recreate there. So if we look at the design again, it's Looks like there's a color one behind. There's a gray one on top that they just slightly shift to create this layered kind of swooping effect. So let's go ahead and do that. And you know what? I think they're using a bit of a gradient and that looks really nice. So let's go, let's actually add one of the gradient ones instead. So I'll delete this guy here. Let's add a gradient blob and shape it just about like that. Now, of course, if this is for yourself and your brand, you'll want to use your brand colors inside of it. So for myself, that is blues and purples. Oops, clicked the wrong one. Oh, no, that was the right one there. This middle shape, let's choose something. A great trick within Canva is if you want to do a alteration to a particular color, you want it to be close to a color, but slightly off, darker, lighter, just a bit of a tint different. First, choose the color you kind of want it based on. So now it's kind of, that's the one selected, and then go into the new color palette. It'll start as that particular color. So that way too, when you're adjusting, it's coming from that as kind of like a baseline. So in my case here, if I wanted to, let me go a lighter one or darker, I kind of like that. So it's a bit more seamless. Great. You know what, actually, I wouldn't mind having a bit more purple. So I'm gonna reset that, go with the purple color, and then I'm just gonna bring it a bit more to the blue. There we have it, I like that. Let's roll with that, that's a very dark and rich one. So that's the first part, that kind of gets our background. Now let's find a way to get this gray on top, and quite simply, we're just going to copy and paste. So here we have it. Now, despite the fact that it is a gradient, of course we could all, always just choose all the same color, right? So we're not gonna have to, just because it starts as a gradient shape, if you just put them all the same, it's gonna come out as a one flat color. Now, what am I making a bit lighter, I think? So let's, as this as a baseline, we'll grab this, and now we'll take, grab this pointer and just move it up. Now we want all three to be the same, so what I'm gonna do is copy this code, and then I go to these other ones. Oh, two ways to go about it. So I could have copied the color code, when I go into new color, I could just paste it in, that's great. But Canva also pulls out every color I've added to this document inside the document color, so I can just click on 
that one as well. And there it is. So now you can see if we put it on top, you can't see anything. And now we can play around with how the shape looks. So what's the best arrangement for this as far as rotating it so that the two of them interact nicely? A trick with this as well is if you want to make it a little bit smaller, you can pull out maybe a little bit more or less and kind of create a more interesting interaction between the two shapes. Ooh, okay, I kind of like that. And this is really just playing. You know, there's, there's not really going to be a right answer to what you're doing. So just mess around until you kind of find that right mix that you want. So what I'd like to, so what I'm trying to get to is I'd like to have a little bit of color kind of crusting on the top right there. Let's see if I can, so it's kind of fun when you're playing, there's some interesting effects that kind of happen. That was an accent. I kind of like how that looks. I'll remember that one for a later, a different date, but so this is the best part of kind of playing around is eventually you'll find some interesting configurations you weren't really expecting. And actually, you know what? I like how that's looking there too. That's a nice bit of color. Okay. So we've got those two parts of it, and now we need to add those two other parts here. We have kind of an outline shape and a shadow, and then the screenshot. So let's work on the outline shape first, and then I have a trick for you for the screenshot itself. So shapes, let's get ourselves a rounded corner. It's white with a drop shadow. So we can play around with how much of it we want it to cover, if we want it to be maybe not exactly a perfect square. There we go, that's kind of a nice interaction. Let's go ahead and make it white. I'll tell you what, actually I'm gonna keep it dark because I'm gonna be positioning the drop shadow and I wanna have be able to better see it and we'll change it into a white afterwards. Now, as I've mentioned in a few videos, Canva doesn't have great drop shadow support at the moment. If you go to my website at justenough.design on the homepage there, you'll see what I call the shadow pack. That includes a whole host of these simple shadow PNGs that you can upload here to Canva and use to add that extra layer of depth really useful. There's a whole ton of them that you can also do effects where you have, you make it look as if it's floating. These, of course, you can work on the transparency to give how strong or bold it is, but we'll get rid of that. The one I'm looking, so again, that's a freebie you can find on my website. Super useful. Something I use all the time, honestly, since I created it. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing, so I grabbed the full square one, just part of that pack, and I'm going to make it, uh, just size it there so it'll cover the whole thing. Now I need to get it behind the square. So I'm going to move this aside. I'll grab the square. I'll bring to front. Grab my shadow and put it there. That's behind. We can choose how much of it shows. I always like to have it go down a bit more than anywhere else on the shape. Kind of a personal preference, but I think it always looks a little bit nicer when it's raised up. And then you can adjust the transparency. I'm still selected the shadow to soften how much of it actually shows. There we have it. Now let's go ahead and make this white. Excellent. And that's worked out really well for us. Now, you'll see they have the screenshot of the website. Uh, so quick way to do that, what's really nice with uh, the screenshot tool on whatever br uh, system you're using, so both Mac and uh, PC, is that it'll copy it directly to your clipboard. There's an option to copy it, and then it'll paste right into Canvas, so you're not going to have to, you know, save it, download it, re-upload it. So let's. This is my website here. I'll put it about there. Now another trick you can try here as well is if you, and this will, results will vary, but you can, it's certainly you can play with. If you want to get more on screen and then adjust the sizing of it, press Control or Command minus, and reduce the zoom of that browser it just zooms out everything so you can see more and then here you can play so i'll be able to capture a little bit more inside the site and have better control of it so let's go with about that shape i think that looks good now for pc what works really well is just the snipping tool now you'll see that they're actually switching to a different one but the snipping tool i pretend i like in particular you hit new and we just drag it mac uh, there's a couple keyboard shortcuts that brings up a draggable screenshot grabber. It does this exact same thing. So let's go like this. 
Let's copy it. And paste it. Now it looks like it needs to be a bit more square to fit nicely, so let's try this again. Oops, <laughs> I thought that was the actual browser. <laughs> Here we are. Let's make it a bit more square. Try that again. Okay, snipping tool. With a screen grabbing tool on the Mac. Grab a square. I may hear some noise in the background here. We're currently locked down where I am, as most of the world is at this moment, so you'll excuse a little bit of extra noise, but just the new reality we're all dealing with. <laughs> there we go, just gonna work with the cropping of it to get it placed inside. So I'd expect you to spend a little bit of time to Get your screenshot exactly perfect, but that's going to hit the point. What's especially nice, and this was actually an accident, but um, it works incredibly well, is that you have the colors from the website itself actually called out into the color behind it. So it just means that everything's this one cohesive design. So that's quite interesting. And there you have it. So all we have to do is layer a few shapes, do some subtle adjustments to have it offset, add some colors and some non-colors, creates this interesting movement and layering effect. From there, we take a flat shape and apply one of my shadow PNGs to give it that pop and that bounce against the background. And then using your computer's screen grabbing tool, grab it, paste it on top, and we recreate a very interesting way to spruce up your screenshots on your website or anywhere else you want to post it, social media, uh, presentations, everything else. So a really cool effect that I found this is coming from accessalley.com and recreated in Canva for use in your own projects. So, till next time, cheers to your great looking work.